Hey YouTube, Red Quill here, and back for another video. Today I'll be going over pages 13 and 14, and this time I'll be changing up the video format a little bit. First I'll just talk about the content on the pages, and then I'm actually going to open the uh, page digital files to kind of give a breakdown on how it, how it was made. On page 13, uh, Frank is taking out his blade from the cleaner's back and the cleaner collapses and is in desperate need of help and begs the other Legion members for assistance. However, Frank is undone and he pins the cleaner down and demands that the rest of the uh, members of Legion in page 14 help finish the job. However, he finds they're much more hesitant than usual and don't immediately budge to do what he says. So at this point, I would see that Frank would be in kind of a panic because since he's done just such a horrible crime, if they don't get involved, he's kind of in real trouble. So he, in the very final panel of page 14, uh, screams do it at them, almost like uh, Emperor Palpatine in Star Wars. Granted, uh, in this case, I took a lot of creative liberties and enjoyed making Frank look more like a monster because... One, I wanted his uh, mouth to be much more visible as he screams at the other members of Legion. And in order to do that, I thought it'd be cool if his mask kind of opened up to make a, another monstrous uh, outline. And another thing that's worth noting on these two pages and for what I plan for basically the rest of the comic is I'm not going to have the... Uh, narration text blocks uh, before I was kind of giving in the each of the comic pages I'd give a general overview of what was happening and the actual characters themselves would hardly say anything but I feel like moving forward I'm gonna change that and I'd like to just have the members of Legion do all the talking so there won't be any narration uh, text boxes in the rest of the pages except maybe on the very last page of the comic when I do like an epilogue. All right, on to the new section of the vlog series. So I thought rather than showing a video uh, recording of when I was drawing the page initially, I thought it'd be uh, neat to actually show a completed uh, Clip Studio Paint file. So Clip Studio Paint is the uh, drawing editor I use for creating my comic book pages. It has a lot of software tools that are especially for making comic books and honestly if you're just a a uh, want to be a comic book creator on a low budget I highly recommend Clip Studio Paint. I had no experience in using it up until about a year ago and but it is amazing and it's really easy to pick up. So the first thing I'll kind of, this isn't going to be a tutorial on how to use Clip Studio Paint. I just thought it'd be more cool to show though how I'm using Clip Studio Paint to make these pages. So the first thing I'll go over is uh, a neat feature Clip Studio allows is you can create little uh, layer folders for each of your panels. So notice the f top two panels on page 13 are blued out and only the third bottom panel is uh, true, fully visible. This means that this is the only file where my changes will be saved and can be edited. So in the uh, right bottom corner, you can see all the different layers I've made uh, to make this uh, panel's drawing. I'll go ahead and zoom in on it. And I, I go kind of overboard on these layers. Like, you don't have to make this many, but it never really hurts to add more. Like, for instance, I have two different layers for the blood. Let's see. So that was just the darker blood layer, and then the bottom one is the uh, lighter colors. So part of why I go overboard on adding way more layers than necessary is I find a lot of the paint tools I use, uh, they tend, sometimes the colors will blend together more than I want. So to help uh, prevent colors from blending, I just keep them on separate layers. There's probably some other uh, features I can enable to help prevent that or just use a different paint tool. But again, this, I've been kind of self t 
teaching my, on how to actually use Clip Studio Paint. I probably should watch more tutorial videos myself to get even better at it, but uh, I kind of prefer just exploring its features and then just using what I know. But so, yeah, another really cool thing about Clip Studio Paint is the text, the all the uh, text blocks and the different uh, text bubbles. All you have, it's really just a drag and drop feature. Like say, I want to just create any text. Let's make it pretty small. So I'm gonna use a text tool, type something here. Hi. I can just go to the, and create, drag and drop a text bubble. And then just also have a nice little, what we call balloon tail to make it look like this man is saying it. I don't know, to me, this is really cool. And this makes my job so much easier. <laughs> and uh, again, I'm gonna, this is, I'm no way sponsored by Eclipse Studio Paint, but if you're just looking for a great comic book uh, making software, I highly recommend them. So what else do I wanna talk about? So the main, uh, method I use to help make these pages is I have layers for just the pen work, layers for all the quote unquote base colors, meaning the non shaded versions. Let me see if I can give a good example. So if I remove all the shading, the page looks much more bland. And initially, uh, you know, I'm actually going to erase a few more things. So this isn't all of the layers, but as you can see, I usually just start with some, a pin layer. And after I think I have a pretty, I've done a pretty good job on that. I start to fill in my base colors. Once my base colors are filled in, I then do, which for me is probably my favorite part is to add the final shading details. I don't know. I find it really satisfying after you've spent a couple hours making a page. Uh, to put the finishing touches on it. Like, I think to me that's the at least the most enjoyable part because you really get to and I guess that just really heightens the feeling of accomplishment when you can really create a 3D effect which is the shading tools. Uh, how I actually implement the shading is there are different paintbrush options in Clip Studio Paint. And for the base colors, you use a either oil paint or just the bucket tool, and that will fill in a color completely. Yeah, see, so it just fills it in for me. Granted, you might want to select a part of the page you actually want to color. But here, we're just having fun. So I'll hit undo. Come on, there we go. But uh, to actually do shading, I just usually change to a watercolor brush. Granted, I don't really want it to look green, but I'll just kind of give an example. So it's slightly see-through, but allows to create a shading effect, like so. So yeah, the main three layers I, again, I typically use are just a pin layer, a base color layer, and then shading layers. I have multiple of each typically in case I either want to make changes later, like say, like, hey, I didn't like how I shaded some of these features. I can just, well, okay, actually, so here's a good example. So say I don't like how I shaded the background, I can just uh, uh, make the either delete or make invisible the background shading layer, and then just create another layer and redo it. So by adding more and more layers for each part, it's a lot easier to either undo your changes uh, later in the game or later in the pages development. What else should I talk about? One thing that might be cool. So I'm gonna, to even get the uh, basic pen work uh, done well, I always need a initial sketch of what I want. Because, as I've stated in other vlog videos, doing pen work is, like, anything involving the actual, like, fine lines of a page is, for me, really challenging, at least to make it look convincing. So, I usually I do, I have to redraw uh, all of the pen lines several times in multiple layers. I always start with a layer called pen light, 
where I initially, let's see, this is what it looked like originally, is I just do a lot of rough sketchy lines, highlighting, giving me a general idea of what I want. And I slowly add details to it until I feel like it's a good, basically a base for tracing. Then when I feel like I'm ready, I decrease its visibility or opacity. And then I create a pen heavy layer and I'll trace over it and also tweak it to make it look even more realistic. But what really makes a page pop out is the color. And that's when I go into the other layers I've mentioned earlier of I start adding base colors, then eventually I add shading layers. So that's, so that's a overall, or that's a good summary of all the steps I take to make these pages. But uh, you can do so much using this software. I love it so much. Like for instance, uh, these cool text effects. Like this, for me, this would be impossible if I was just hand drawing. Because I don't like honestly, I don't know how people who use traditional art mediums do it. Like for me, just having these tools where I can create text boxes. Like, I, I know I'm rambling, but I'll, I'll kind of show how you can do this kind of text effect real quick, just because I think it's so cool that how easy it is. So let's just do, ah, make it thick real quick, change my font. Oh, <laughs> the main thing I'm point I'm just trying to get across here is to is really just that if you're in interested in making comics, I highly recommend just using the software because it gives you a lot more creative freedoms. And like I just couldn't imagine imp doing either any of this coloring or even like these text effects with just by hand. Like it wouldn't look nearly as good. But anyway, so to kind of show how I can create a text effect like this, Clip Studio is nice in that they create a nice little highlight option. So if I click this button, it does a border effect. And this is awesome for any uh, action text you're using. So we can increase the border to however we like it. I think that looks pretty good. Then we're if we want to change its shape, we'll need to raterize it. Raterizing means that the text is now going to act like just a normal picture and has effectively become just pixels. Beforehand, if you're familiar with what a vector image is, uh, which is effectively an image that can be scaled up without losing any of its uh, information. Uh, I know that was kind of a bad explanation, but basically text are generally known as like a type of vector uh, image. And uh, by raterizing it, you're making it almost like any other picture. However, if you keep, now that it's a pixelated picture, if you increase its size large enough, it's going to become really blurry. But this allows us to chain, to transform it any way we want. So um, to demonstrate how to make a text effect, let's do free transform. I'm going to, now let's see, this is just for fun, so we can do whatever we want. But I'm using the free transform tool, which lets you change the perspective of your text. I think I'm going to say that looks pretty good. Then I'm also going to use the mesh transformation tool. This allows you to warp your either any image or text that you're using the uh, tool on. So I'm going to try and have it curve. Okay, that looks kind of nice. Then finally, we're just going to change the opacity. And that's typically how I make uh, these different 
uh, text effects. This one I might not have changed the opacity too much, but as you can see I definitely did for this. I like it because uh, it still allows me to show what's behind the text effect and doesn't make it uh, stand out too much in the page because I still want the actual characters to be the main focus. So I know this has been kind of a rambling, but uh, I, I just thought it'd be kind of cool to show pe anyone who was interested kind of like what goes into making a page and what they can do using Clip Studio Paint. So since I spent so long uh, rambling on the first page, I won't talk about too much on page 14. Um, Cause again, I make all my pages almost the same way. I start with just some basic uh, pen sketches. Like, see if I could pull it up here. Uh, da, da, da. Huh. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I always start with basic pen sketch, uh, sketch lines. You do your pen heavy, and then, as I showed before, you add color, then finally shading. But what I would like to talk about here is how you can create different uh, shading effects. So normally, I think I showed on the last page how I normally will just use the watercolor tools to make uh, slightly see-through uh, paint marks that make, I think, for pretty convincing uh, shading effect, as kind of shown on Julie's sleeve here. However, to kind of one thing I've kind of just recently been doing uh, since the different members of Legion are inside a building, uh, I needed another way of uh, indicating that it's really dark inside, as this is a closed video store, and that I just wanted something different that the uh, watercolor tools couldn't give me. So I found it was actually pretty uh, helpful just to create a giant... Uh, a one layer that is just one color and then change its opacity. What I mean is to create this night effect inside the shop I have a layer called purple and what this is is just it was a layer I initially filled entirely with purple and then I slowly started erasing where I wanted uh, different parts of the page to look brighter and then I decreased its visibility or opacity to make it so you can still see the whole page but uh, it does look like there is a purplish shading effect across the whole room. I don't know if this will be helpful for anyone but I thought this once I just started using this I think it was pay, around page 10 I started using this idea. Uh, I, I really like how it turns out like to me I think it actually looks pretty convincing that they're in a night setting in the empty store. And the final thing I'm going to mention is on this panel. So this is just something if you're ever going to do a comic, I think it's worth keeping in mind. Is for background effects. Uh, I think sometimes it's really nice that the background doesn't actually have any pin marks. Here I'm trying to at least reference uh, what the entity looks like and um, granted this isn't really there in the story this is just as kind of a uh, highlight that uh, Frank is kind of under the influence of the entity right now so I tried to draw the entity's different uh, tentacles or at least uh, suggest uh, the presence of the entity and I think I just think if you want your focus to be on your main character in the foreground uh, draw them as normal, have the little pen lines, but for anything in the background, sometimes it just looks really nice uh, to just do no pen lines and just use your paint tools. At least I think it's just a simple thing you can do and it's a nice, it really helps keep the focus on the character you want, but uh, when they do look at the background, it still at least uh, gives a nice effect. So that's been me rambling for way too long, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it and at least found this interesting. So uh, if you learn nothing else today, if you want to 
uh, work on comic books, I highly recommend Clip Studio Paint. Just get it. I know I'm not even using it nearly to its full potential, because I see other people do much more detailed work than I am. Use way more tools than I'm currently using. So I really feel like with the software, the options are endless. And if I'm not mistaken, I paid significantly less than $100 for it when I bought it. It might be more expensive now, but uh, I definitely recommend if you're a new artist and interested in doing this kind of work uh, to go check it out. Well, I hope you found this interesting, and uh, please let me know in the comments if you'd want me to uh, go uh, into any more detail on how I do a certain part of these pages. But uh, have a great week, and I'll try to make another video uh, sometime next weekend. Adios.